in uh, actual party building and to engage in making the party a meaningful structure. And Ron Nate was right out on the forefront of that. Ron Nate was there when we had uh, we had problems with uh, some of our leadership. One of the uh, issues that when I first really got to know Ron was at a rules committee, or excuse me, a resolutions uh, committee meeting of the central committee. We had a resolution that was really important that we had to get passed. Uh, to advance the cause of, of uh, our uh, closed primary, and Ron took the he took the uh, the battle, took the, the uh, he took the issue to the to the presented it to the Rules Committee in such a way that it got overwhelming support. And I really saw the measure of the man this last year. Some of us thought, well, you know, isn't it isn't it kind of ridiculous? We we sit here in the Idaho the state of Idaho where we're a solid Republican state, and yet we're the, one of the very last ones to choose our nominee. Yes. And by that time, the nominee has already been selected. So why can't we do something about it to where we can actually weigh in on it, to where the Republican candidates will come to Idaho, and where Idaho can be put on the map? Ron was at first a little reluctant on that, because it does change things. Ron took it once again, got a hold of that issue, and he became the chairman of, the, of the, uh, the rules committee that adopted the rules for our caucus. As a result of Ron's leadership, we had 44 caucuses around the state that was all a rousing caucus. It was a party building event like no other event in the history of the state of Idaho. And that was thanks in large part to the leadership of Ron Nate. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to ask you to vote for Ron Nate for first vice chairman of the Idaho Republican Party. Thank you. I'm a delegate from Madison County, and I'm very happy to second the motion for Ron Nate as first vice chair. I've had the opportunity to work with Ron in many different circumstances. He was our chairman for a while, and I'm now his. And uh, uh, Gayanne, if you, if you win this, he listens to women. I've had him vote on things that he probably didn't want to vote on, but he really is an open person. He likes to understand what the issues are, and then he wants to know what is best for the Republican Party. And that's the thing that I really appreciate about him. He's open, he's honest, and he is a hard worker. He goes the extra mile. And I really appreciate the time that I've had to work with him, and I think he will make an excellent vice chair, whether it's Barry or Gayanne, they will absolutely love to have him on his team, on their team. Thank you. My name is Todd Hammond, I'm, a, I'm also a delegate from Madison County, and, and I'm pleased to second the nomination of Ron Nate. He's capable, he's very organized, and he's very enthusiastic. He gets things done and in a way that rallies people around him. I've seen it happen many times, especially over this exciting caucus that we had in Madison County and throughout all the state. I think you can count on Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pleased to be speaking before you again. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Todd. It, it's hard to uh, to listen to people say good things about you. I, I, I almost feel like they, they stretch the truth a little bit. But uh, I, I do try hard. I don't know if uh, the results are always perfect, but I try hard. Um, my name is Ron Nate. I'm running for first vice chair for the Idaho GOP. I, uh, I'm an economics professor. And I've been involved with college Republicans a lot. I've been involved in the county party. I've been the, the county Republican chair. I've been the state committeeman. I am currently the standing rules chair. And uh, I'm pleased to be the co-chair, I'm sorry, the co-chair of the standing rules committee. I work with Gordon Eccles, he's been great. And I am the co-chair of the state um, convention rules committee as well. 
Um, I didn't have a chance to visit with all the regions yesterday. There just simply wasn't enough time to hit them all. So I apologize to those regions I didn't get to talk to. But one thing I noted was that uh, I'm somewhat of a constitutional nerd. I, I read things like the law by Bastiat and Road to Serfdom and, and uh, uh, the Theory of Moral Sentiments by Adam Smith for fun. And uh, um, one thing I didn't say in those meetings that I want to point out today is that uh, I listed my heroes on my bio there. And uh, some of you may have noticed that there's a Democrat lurking among my heroes. Um, his name is President Grover Cleveland. And the reason why he is one of my heroes, for those of you who know presidential history, you'll know this about him. He vetoed 584 bills while president. He also, he, one bill in particular was the Texas Seed Bill. There was a drought in Texas in 1887. The Texas farmers were in a pickle. And uh, the Congress passed the Texas Seed Bill, $10,000 to help them replant their crops. Not a lot of money even back then. But Grover Cleveland vetoed it. And in his reasoning, I want to read this. I'm a little nervous, so I want to read it so that I get it correct. This was what he mentioned in his reasons. I can find no warrant for such an appropriation in the Constitution, and I do not believe that the power and duty of the general government ought to be extended to the re relief of individual suffering. He says, I think it should be steadfastly resisted to the end that the lesson should constantly be enforced that though the people support the government, the government should not support the people. We need more statesmen like Grover Cleveland. Though a Democrat then, I think would be an outstanding Republican today. We need to elect more people like that. As a Standing Rules Committee Chair, I would promise to be of good support to whoever our new state party chairman is to go over the rules, make sure that they're clear and understandable, and that can be followed to the letter so that everyone can feel comfortable with outcomes at the state convention, at the state rules, um, at the state central committee meetings, so that we can conduct the business of the Idaho Republican Party in complete confidence. And I, I promise to work hard to that end, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ron. Now, Chief Hylison's nominating, seconding, and candidate speeches. several years, and as I think back about my experience with him, one word comes to mind, among others that I will discuss in a minute, but that word is consistent. Chick has been consistent in his dedication to principles espoused by the Republican Party. He's a lover of freedom, a lover of individuality, individualism, and a lover of patriotism, and he's a lover of the Constitution. I've heard today someone refer to themselves as a constitutional nerd. Chick is a constitutional nerd to the 10th power. He's a BYU graduate in history and political science and has spent his lifetime not only learning about the Constitution, but sharing his beliefs and his learning and his knowledge with others. I have sat in cottage meetings with Chick as he's explained the simple truths of the Constitution and his love for the principles of freedom with others. And he is, these things all qualify him as a solid conservative and an exemplary Republican. Chick is also a Vietnam veteran, having served in the Army and a successful business owner. He 
also has demonstrated leadership and commitment to the Republican Party, having served as the second vice chair in Bonneville County, legislative district chair in District 31, and a precinct committeeman in Bonneville County. And although unsuccessful, Chick can say, unlike very few people, that he has run as a candidate for Congress. He also has seven children, and he has 13 grandchildren. And I know he's honest, because when I asked him how long he'd been married today, he said he wasn't sure. <laughs> and one last thing I can say, in addition to Chick being consistent and having leadership and commitment to the principles of the Republican Party and his honesty, at the end of the day, it is undeniable that Chick Hylison is just downright likable. So it's with all that, I without hesitation place in the name of place the name of Chick Hylison for the first vice chair of the Idaho Republican Party. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Gene Vishnevsky, Gideon County, and uh, Chick asked me to do this second in the speech, and I said, did you want me to uh, give the speech for Ron or for Mike? And he said, I'm not sure why he picked me. But he said, speak whatever you want to say. Well, I've known Chick actually for about 20 years. As a matter of fact, like his mother, I call him Marvin. He's one of the few people that I know that can actually spell and say Vishnevsky. <laughs> I know that Chick is a strong constitutionalist, and above all, he's an American. America comes first, and as the, as the party of America, he's a Republican right down to the core. I highly recommend you to vote for Chick Hylson. Well, I can tell you one thing, I'm experienced in losing elections. I've done two. They say the third time's a charm. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you, I gotta be somewhat, I guess I gotta be somewhat honest. I shunned the Republican Party early in my early years and the political process. But I'll tell you what, this state these communities and this nation needs hope. And right here in this group, you find it. I was, I'm, just, I'm just almost amazed and excited to sit in these sessions, the resolutions, the rules. I have, I've sat in some of them listening. This, I mean, this is where you get your hope. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the place that's going to change things in the future. And it's going to make not only this state but the model for the nation. I am just so proud to be involved with you guys. And I didn't shun you guys, but some of them earlier guys that didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> but let me tell you, this, this is exciting. I have, it's, it's hard to express with words to see and be in your presence. I'm telling you that I appreciate this opportunity. So I, I, one of the guys that, uh, one of the ladies, oh yeah, oh, I can't say this, you probably can't. <laughs> anyway, a former person I was running against, one of the ladies that was uh, the assistant to him says, may the best win, man win, and I says, thank you, and it didn't work out that way. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Chick. Okay, we will have the uh, nominating, seconding, and candidate speeches now for Mike Matthews. Hello, my 
name is uh, Chris Harriman. I am the uh, current state treasurer. Um, I'm here on behalf of Mike Matthews. I wish to place his name and nomination to the first vice chairman. Um, you, most of you probably already know Mike's bio. Um, so I'm not going to get into all the things that Mike has done. If you're not aware of it, um, please read it. Mike has been a Republican his entire life. Um, and, and I've had the pleasure to be able to say that Mike is my close friend. But Mike and I met um, in party politics. I became a precinct committee person in Twin Falls, Idaho, uh, about 12, 13 years ago. And I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't sure what I was gonna, how I was going to perform in that task. Uh, I had some strong, very conservative ideas and wanted to try to do something with them. And so Mike Matthews was our county chairman. And Mike managed the Twin Falls County uh, chairmanship and the Twin Falls Central Committee with decency and uh, poise and respecting those differing opinions that we experienced right here. He did that with a plum. Um, so much so that even as he elevated to the position of 